Hey, it's me. So today, as you can tell from the title, I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks on ribbon skirts. You know, like if you have some problems that you need to fix or um, just basic shit that you need to get over. So I am sitting in my mother's car right now. Actually, this is the only time that I could find right now to record. I, um, I started school. This is my last full-time semester for my bachelor's. So that started and I've just I've got like other things going on so I haven't found the time to film this video until now so anyway let's get into it I've got some notes here I have it like really organized out so that I don't have to think too hard while I film so I've been sewing for about 15 years I'm almost 30 and I started when I was a teenager and I've sewn a lot of different projects, um, not just like native stuff, but regular clothing that you, I don't know, regular dresses and like, I made a suit jacket and suit pants last year. Um, Halloween costumes, like all kinds of stuff. So I have a lot of experience with sewing, but lately I have been, um, answering questions about ribbon skirts and showing women how to draft and make ribbon skirts and I've noticed a lot of different things that um, people weren't sure about when it came to different things involved with ribbon skirts so drink every time I say ribbon skirt just kidding don't drink that's not sacred <laughs> okay we're just gonna get into it Oh, and one more thing, to make it easy for you to navigate to whatever tip or trick that you're interested in, I'm going to be um, doing like blank screens like as transitions from one topic to the next. So if you use the scrub bar, you can use that until you, you know, see a black screen and with a label on whatever topic I'm going to be talking about next, all right? Okay, so the very first thing that I've been asked about um, and that I see people talking about the most is how to get ribbons into straight lines. Um, sorry if I'm not looking at the camera like all the time. I have notes here. So anyway, um, getting ribbons into straight lines. Um, what I do myself is the measuring method. So I might have shown you this in... Actually, I just showed a little glimpse of it in my ribbon skirt tutorial because I, I fucked up right there. Let me be honest, I just messed up during the filming process. I didn't show that enough. Um, I did go into more detail in, with how I do it in the ribbon dress for kids tutorial. Basically, I don't attach um, or pin my ribbon to the fabric before I take it to the sewing machine to turn it on. I actually use my measuring tape, like measure it out as I'm sewing it on. If you want to see it in action or get a better uh, description of what that involves, you can go to the ribbon dress tutorial. I'll link it or right there. <laughs> Whichever side, I don't know. Um, another trick, and this is really good for beginners, is using an Elmer's glue stick, like the kind that you get in the school supply section, a cheap little glue stick. Um, so you'll glue the ribbon onto the fabric. One woman told me that she suggests ironing the ribbon after you glue it onto, and what that'll do is it'll strengthen the stick of the glue. Um, and she suggested doing that because once that glue dries, you know, this is like, this is cheap ass glue. Let's just be real here. It's cheap ass glue. And when it dries, some parts might not stick as well as other parts, especially if you um, didn't apply the glue as heavy right there. So she found that her ribbons were coming unstuck in little areas and puckering up. And that made her ribbons kind of pucker a little bit. So, um, another way is to use heat bond strips so heat bond is basically it's a glue 
that is really easy for you to apply. Um, it comes like in a solidified state, kind of like how hot glue is. It's solidified and then when you heat it up, it um, melts and sticks to whatever you're applying it to before um, cooling down and solidifying again. So heat bond strips, you would iron the ribbon onto the strip and then it'll be backed by uh, paper. And then you'll peel that paper off, apply the ribbon and iron it on in a very hot setting and you know, holding it on there nice and um, with good pressure. And there's videos on how to apply heat bond really well. I haven't done one myself because I learned from a video. So, I mean, I can link that too. Um, Another way to keep your ribbon straight is to only measure the first one and then all like subsequent ribbons, you can eliminate a gap in between them. So you'll be sewing your ribbons right next to each other instead of having a gap. That way, you know, you only have to worry about getting that first one pinned straight and then it'll kind of like set the stage for subsequent ribbons. So another frequent topic is puckering of the ribbons. So um, one major reason, reason, one major reason <laughs> that your ribbon might be puckering is because the tension of your sewing machine is off, the tension of your thread. So if you don't understand what tension is, tension is basically how tightly your sewing machine is um, pulling on the thread, like how much tension is putting on that thread. Your tension might be too tight and that'll cause your ribbon and possibly even your fabric too. It'll cause it to scrunch up, which makes it pucker. Um, so you would have to reduce the tension on your sewing machine. Usually um, you'll have like basic settings on your sewing machine. So you'll have like the length of your stitch, the width of your stitch, and um, your tension. So uh, usually what I see is it'll be like on a wheel and you'll want to use a lower number. So the higher the number, the more tension is placed on it. The lower the number, the less tension is placed on your thread. Um, you don't want your tension to be too low though because that means that your thread is going to be looser and it won't be as noticeable on like a straight stitch but it's really noticeable when you're using a zigzag stitch which is frequently used to apply ribbon so your zigzag it, it won't form a zigzag <laughs> really. If you're using a straight stitch, then having a setting that is too low, a tension setting that is too low, it won't hold the ribbon and the fabric together tight enough. Another topic is mismatched seams. And what I'm talking about is when usually what you do is you have a front of the skirt and a back of the skirt. You'll apply the ribbons to both sides and then you'll sew um, the front and the back together and you'll have a seam on either side. Now you have to get your ribbon on the front and the back like in the exact same spots so that when you sew them together and you have your side seam that they are um, in the same, that they're matching up. Um, sometimes your ribbon might become mismatched just you know sometimes by a little sometimes by a lot or sometimes it's way off so uh, there's a couple ways that you can combat that and um, one easy way is to apply dangly ribbons so uh, this is something that you would want to keep in mind before applying your ribbon it might be good for beginners to do this as well is sometimes um, instead of sewing the ribbons into the seams, people will leave the ribbons hanging out and it's basically for the look too. Um, but not only could you do it because you like the look of the ribbons hanging outside of the skirt, but it'll also offer like a way to hide if you get your ribbons mismatched a little bit. 
Um, another way is to insert fabric on the sides and make it look, you know, you want to make that look intentional. So um, I'll get a little more in depth later on on how to insert fabric on the sides. I think I talk about that when I talk about like widening the skirt and alterations and that's actually towards the end of the video. But um, adding like a rectangle, a rectangular piece of fabric to the side seams or a triangular piece of fabric to the side seams, what that'll do is it'll create a gap between the ribbon and it'll be less obvious that it's mismatched. Um, let's see, begin by sewing hem to waist so that the area with ribbon is sewn first. So basically when you are sewing your front and your back piece together, instead of beginning by the waist and sewing down to the hem, you'll start from the hem and sew up to the waist. Um, so you'll turn your skirt upside down and you'll, and you'll sew the hem in first um, down to the waist. And the reason I suggest that is because that way you can make sure that your ribbons are placed and sewn nicely and then go ahead and sew the rest of the skirt. Because typically we, we place our ribbons towards the bottom of our skirts. Sometimes people will sew them all the way up or um, somewhere in the middle. Can't say I've ever heard one where the ribbons are towards the top. Um, I'd like to see that though. But um, I guess that really only works if you plan on placing your ribbons towards the bottom. So um, another thing to keep in mind is whether your fabric is easy to work with. So typically what a lot of people sew with is cotton. It's really easy to work with. Um, it comes in different prints and patterns. Sometimes I've seen people make ribbon skirts out of different fabrics. I have one that's made out of a really thick fabric. I don't know what kind of fabric it is, though. But sometimes people will make it out of satin, like whatever. But I, I did make a ribbon dress for one of my daughters out of a really stretchy fabric. And I noticed that you had to be very careful and particular with how you sew that fabric together um, and how you sew the ribbons onto the fabric. And that's because if you're stretching the fabric, then you can end up sewing your ribbon in a different spot. <laughs> so like, and I mean this, if let's say you kind of stretch out the fabric on the back, more than you're stretching out the fabric on the front, then your ribbons are going to end up mismatched. So keep in mind the type of fabric that you're using because if you are using a really stretchy fabric, then you'll want to be very careful when applying the ribbons or when um, sewing the seams together. Another way is to apply applique. So I mentioned this a couple times and covering, you know, different mess ups up, but not only is applique really pretty to look at and it really adds like a very customized um, or it makes your skirt into a piece of art, you know, it isn't just for looks, but it can also really cover up some mistakes. So if you, if you mismatch your ribbons or if you use the um, the method of applying fabric in between to put a gap between the ribbons, you know, you can put some applique on that too, or you can put some applique on the side seams, and that way it'll cover up the mismatch. So another common mess up is uneven ribbon. And what I'm talking about is when you're sewing your ribbon on and you don't quite get it as straight as you want it to be um, it might kind of like look like wobbly or I don't know um, like this picture anyway a couple different things you can do is to just kind of hide it so you can use the applique trick you know if there's a spot or a couple spots where your ribbon is really wonky and uneven but it looks pretty good in other areas you know you might just want to put some applique applique on those spots 
Um, another thing that can really add some um, creativity and, and make your skirt look customized is adding lace over top that ribbon or underneath it. Um, and you know, it makes it look cute and it hides the unevenness or at least makes it not as obvious if you apply lace like over top that ribbon. Um, and I'm talking about like the, the strips of lace. Um, another way that your ribbon can be uneven is if it's like lopsided. So what I'm talking about here is where you get your ribbon straight, but it's higher on one side than it is on the other. So a couple different ways is you can apply applique. I, I here's a suggestion is applying like applique on the side where it's lower and then it makes it look like it's intentional. Um, you can also reshape the skirt. So this is a lot harder, but here's a picture where I show like the dotted line is where you would make a new cut and the solid lines would be um, like the original skirt that you have. So reshape the skirt and then cut it out so that it makes the, uh, the ribbons straight again. <laughs> So I don't know if this is really discussed a lot or if it's a big problem, but I just, I went to help my mom um, get supplies so she can make her first ribbon skirt. And I was glad I did because she had it in her mind that she needed to pick a thread for every color of ribbon that she uses. So you don't need to do that. Um, typically what I do for myself is like I'll use a white if I'm using a light fabric or a black if I'm using a dark fabric um, but because my ribbons tend to be like for my black skirt my ribbons were all lighter than the black skirt so I actually used a white thread for that um, and then you can choose to match the pops of color so again, with my black skirt, I used white thread for all of my ribbons, except for that dark red. I actually matched red thread to that one. And this isn't like a rule. You don't, there are no rules to what kind of thread you should use for your ribbon skirt. It's just kind of subjective. If you really want to match the thread color to every single ribbon, that's a lot of work but you do you if you really want to do that um, but the color of thread that you choose it's really up to you another suggestion is to match the color to the fabric so if you have blue fabric um, you can use blue thread to put all your ribbons on regardless of what color your ribbons are if you have a red skirt you know using red thread whatever you want to do Some people are concerned about their ribbons fraying. We always need to block our ribbons. Um, I'll also talk a little bit about fraying fabric because that's important too. Um, so one thing that you can do for fraying fabric is the zigzag stitch on the ends of the fabric there. Um, so once you create your seam, so you sew your front and your back together, then you'll want to split that seam or you want to open that seam up I mean iron it flat and then you can put the seam back together and do a zigzag stitch on it um, <clears throat> another way is to use fabric glue or fray block um, fray block is pretty much the same thing as fabric glue I think it's just um, a liquid that you put on it and it hardens like a glue and it keeps the fabric from fraying you can do that to your ribbons too, but I don't really suggest it because when it dries, it will be visible, especially on satin ribbon, which is the most commonly used ribbon on ribbon skirts. Um, if you are sewing your ribbons into your seam, that might not be a huge deal anyway, so you could use the fray block or the fabric glue. 
but if you are leaving your ribbons out to dangle then you they'll be visible the ends will be visible so you won't want to use the the fabric glue or the fray block um another way to fray block your fabric which is similar to the zigzag stitch is to use a serger i understand that not everybody has access to a serger because they are like 300 bucks <laughs> unless you're like me and you get it you know half off for black friday <laughs> But, I mean, if you want to become um, a serious sewer, then think about getting a serger. Um, my method for fray blocking ribbons is to burn them or, or melt them, whatever you want to call it. So I'll take a lighter and then I'll just kind of like zap the ends of my ribbon. And what will happen is the ribbon will kind of melt. And then I'll press my fingers onto the ribbon ends and it'll it'll melt it so that it won't fray. Um, another method, especially if you are dangling your ribbons outward, is to cut little triangles, triangles out of them. Um, and that isn't like a sure shot to keep it from fraying. It'll just kind of slow down the fraying process because, you know, what happens with fraying is one little fiber will be sticking out or whatever, and then from wearing it or whatever it'll get tugged and then it'll cause all the other little fibers to start to unravel so if you cut the little triangles out of it that um, doesn't really allow that to happen not as quickly anyway so I like to use this method for uh, ribbons that I'm dangling out of the skirt because they're visible and it adds a cute little look to it but I still burn the ends of them. <laughs> So this is the most subjective part of making a ribbon skirt because it's totally up to you of what your vision is, what you like, what you think whoever you're making it for might like, you know. Um, so there's three different kinds. I mean, it's all a spectrum really, but these are kind of like the main pinpoints of that spectrum. So you have a straight skirt, an A-line skirt, and a flowy skirt. I think that the A-line is probably the most common. It's the one that I like the most as well. And what I mean by flowy is it'll, the hem will be so wide that the skirt will end up kind of like folding in on itself as it drapes off of your body. Um, but I do see quite a few of women wearing, or people wearing straight skirts. And those, you kind of have to do things to make it easy for you to walk. So let's say you have a straight skirt, you sew it from waist to hem, like all the way down the side seams, I mean, and it goes to your ankles. You probably won't have enough room for your legs to move to walk. You'll end up kind of walking like this. So what you'll need to do is either make the skirt shorter so like at your knees or right below your knees um, or you can add us you can leave a slit on the side seams so whether if you have a two seam skirt then you can leave a slit on both sides or if you have a one seam skirt then you'll leave a slit just on that seam um, and that way it'll give your legs more room to walk So when I was showing people how to make ribbon skirts, and I used the exact same method that I used in my ribbon skirt tutorial, which is to take your waist, times it by three, divide that by half, and then you do a little more math to draft and map out the pattern, right? Um, some people weren't into that. They're like, whoa, that's way too much thinking and math for me. Um, and they prefer a more simplistic way of doing it. So what I was taught by another woman is to take your fabric and you'll wrap it around you one and a half times. Now I know that this picture is kind of silly, but the circle that says you on the inside, that's your body, right? So you'll start um, your fabric at one hip, let's say your left hip, then you'll wrap it around back around to your left hip 
but then you will cut it or I mean you'll extend that fabric to your right hip so like over top of it and then that will be where you end your measurement um this is best for a straight skirt if you want to use this method for an a-line or a flowy skirt then you need to make it wider so that you can reshape it so what i have here is this is if you don't make it wider and reshape it um you have to kind of make it more pointed at the hem in order to get an a-line or a flowy so if you do that then you'll kind of end up wonky and lopsided the it'll hang off of you on one side and then just be straight on the other so you'll have to measure it wider so as i said before you would start on the left hip wrap it all the way around and then go a little further to the right hip for this i would suggest starting at the right or at the left hip i'm sorry start at the left hip go all the way around and then pass the right hip to like maybe mid back and that'll make it long enough for you to reshape the skirt so that you can get that nice um, that nice a line so what I have here is you see that dotted line in the middle once you cut um, an a line I'm sorry once you cut the the width of the fabric that you need you'll fold it in half that's what that middle dotted line represents and then on the edge that's when you will go ahead and create that angle so that you get an a-line or flowy skirt so the beauty of ribbon skirts is they're typically made with a waistband so you make the fabric much wider than your body and then you use a waistband to stitch it up and it stretches and forms to your body so if you are making a ribbon skirt for somebody and you don't know their measurements you don't want to ask them for their measurements usually you know if you're making a present for them you want it to be a surprise then um you can still kind of make the ribbon skirt what you think will be close to their size because you know the waistband will have some give or take um, you can make that skirt to fit their range rather than their exact you know custom size um, so you can one way is you can find a friend that might be a similar body type or you know height or built um, and ask them for their measurements and ask them to keep a secret <laughs> Um, you can also maybe make the fabric wider, but try just to match the waistband and, um, that will allow for potential alterations if they're needed. So if let's say you make the waistband too small, the fabric will still be wide enough for you to take that waistband out and put a bigger waistband in. Um, and if you add too much fabric then you could always take some off you know as as long as you didn't add some like fancy applique on the sides um, alterations I will discuss them more towards the end of the video but there's always alterations that you can do for uh, resizing a ribbon skirt to fit somebody um, now the only time that I would say that you might want a more particular measurement for somebody is if you want like the the length of the skirt to be at their ankles or even to the floor. Uh, this is because while you can kind of get it close if you want to make the ribbon skirt like at or below the knees or like mid calf you know that calf range makes it easy for you to guess but if you're wanting that skirt to be at their ankles or at the floor like really specifically there um, you might want to just ask them for their measurement or I don't know get a hold of their pants or something I don't know this is because if you find another friend who is also the same height they might not be as leggy as the person that you're making the skirt for. Um, I know that I have a lot of leg and not as much uh, 
abdomen. So <laughs> So I already kind of mentioned this before, but I'm going to go ahead and touch on it again. Uh, cotton is the most frequently used, I think. It's also the easiest to use, especially if you've got like a premium cotton. Um, you have to take into account if you're using a stretchy fabric or really thick fabric. And that's just because you're going to have to you're going to have to handle it a different way than cotton in order to get the ribbons to lay in the same spot or getting them to lay flat or um, how the skirt will hang off of you. Um, let's see. Sometimes you might end up with a thin fabric, even if it's cotton. So like a lot of cottons that, uh, I don't want to say that they're cheap because like all cotton is pretty decent cotton, but it might end up just being like, thin right um so you can like see through it so you might have to add like a liner fabric or wear a slip underneath it um let's see also keeping in mind the kind of ribbon that you're using so satin ribbon is the most frequently used i think it's also really easy to work with um but some ribbon it might not sit well so like if you're using a wired ribbon or it might fray easily or it might be too thick to um, get it to sit on the fabric nicely especially if you're using like a really thick ribbon with really like thin and stretchy fabric <laughs> those two it will be really difficult to get a nice clean look out of Another quick little tip is to use bias tape. So if you aren't confident in um, sewing a nice straight hem or uh, you can't do a rolled hem, um, whatever kind of fear you have about that hem, you can use bias tape. Um, let's see, if you're using the, the slits on the sides, like if you want a, a long straight skirt and you leave slits on the sides, then you can use bias tape to cover those edges. So basically any kind of edge that you have when you're sewing, whatever you're sewing, and you aren't able to clean it up by like using, like creating a seam with another piece of fabric or uh, whatever, you can use bias tape and that is a nice, it gives you a nice clean edge. Um, bias tape can also add to the fashion of your skirt. So you can use a different color and it'll, it'll make it look cute. Okay, another problem, waistband bunches and turns. So I like to use a nice thick waistband. Um, I don't really suggest using a thin waistband because or they might not even be marketed as waistbands. They might just be, you know, a band, like a stretchy band. But the thin ones, they wear out faster and they roll up. And um, you will probably be able to see them easier, especially if you have like a, a chubbier belly. <laughs> then you can see the thin waistband digging into your, your chubbiness. Kind of like, you know, how underwear, like if it's got like a really thin elastic band on your underwear and it digs into your fat, you're going to see that in your skirt as well. So I suggest thicker waistbands. Um, now, sometimes that waistband, it might bunch up or it might turn inside of the skirt because essentially what you're doing when you sew the waistband is, and is you're creating a pocket. So it'll your fabric will fold over and then you'll sew underneath the waistband and that creates a pocket that your waistband sits inside of. So what you can do to keep the waistband from turning or from um, bunching up and like, um, I don't want to use the same word. So from spinning, let's say, or from turning, you can sew notches into it. So here I have a picture of what I did with my black skirt on my ribbon skirt tutorial is I just sewed all the way up like across the waistband in a line that was um, in line with the seam of my skirt. 
and um, that works great for the sides but sometimes what I have noticed with this same exact skirt is it'll kind of fold and bunch up at the front of the skirt where my belly is because my chub will make the the waistband kind of like fold over and bend um so another way that you can combat that is to sew little notches into your skirt so you can do that um, by hand sewing or you can use machine sewing nothing fancy just literally like zap it with a couple stitches and sew some notches in there um the probably the sides and the front and back are all i suggest four of them you know the four directions <laughs> just sew there because you don't want too many notches and the reason for that is because you might need to replace your waistband in the future and if you sew a whole bunch of notches in there you're going to make that really difficult for you to do um, the waistband also needs to be able to stretch and cinch up and if you sew a bunch of notches in there, then you're not going to allow it to stretch as much as it needs to, or you might not allow it to cinch up against your body as much as it needs to. Another reason is because they will probably be visible, even if you use the same color thread as your skirt, you'll, you'll still see that thread. So if you have a whole bunch of notches um, on your waistband, like they're visible, you can see them. pockets <laughs> okay so i made a tutorial for how to put pockets in your skirts i'll go ahead and link that you know if i can how many videos do i have to link so far shit because you can only link four so i hope i didn't exceed that limit but my first thing that i want to mention and i didn't show you how to do this in that tutorial because this is a whole completely different kind of pocket so here's a picture of what I suggest to do if you are way too scared to uh, sew pockets into the sides. You can give yourself a pocket in your waistband. Um, and this is if you are okay with kind of like stretching your waistband away from your body and digging into your waist when you need to access whatever it is you're grabbing for. But um, what you'll do is you'll take a piece of fabric and cut a rectangle out of it whatever size that you're interested in. So um, after that, you will either do a zigzag stitch or fray block or use a serger, whatever method you use for fray block, you will do that to all four edges of the rectangle. Then you'll fold the bottom of the rectangle up, not all the way up because you'll want to leave a flap to, to attach the pocket, the pocket to your uh, skirt. Um, and then you'll sew the sides of that pocket piece so that it forms just a little generic pocket. And then you will sew it onto your waistband. So keep in mind when you sew that flap to your skirt, you will want to find that stitch that you use to create the pocket for your waistband when you sew your waistband in. Um, and you'll want to sew along that line. That's just so you don't have another like little random line <laughs> visible on your skirt. Because again, this stitch will be visible from the outside. You can use a pocket from your clothes as a pattern piece if you're too nervous to draw it out. So um, this is like the basic shape right here on the the pocket that you would want if you're putting it in on the sides but I know that that swoop you kind of have to trust yourself to be able to draw it there's no way to really draft it out like it is with the the straight lines so if you're too nervous you know, go grab a pair of pants fold them inside out find the pocket and you can trace that onto the paper instead of trying to draw it yourself um now, what I'm going to get into next for pockets, this can be a major problem. So there's two different ways that you can fuck up here. And they both involve not matching the seam of the pocket to the seam of the rest of the skirt. So sometimes you might sew your, your pocket seam not as wide as the seam of the skirt. So to, to fix that, you'll just you'll fold your skirt inside out. 
and then you will sew a new seam on the rest of the skirt that matches up with the pocket. Um, you don't have to really worry about ripping the old seam out. You just you just sew next to it is all. Um, the other problem is if you sew the the pocket too wide compared to the seam of the skirt. So in that case, you would take each pocket seam because there's two of them. Again, your your pocket opens. So you have two seams in the pocket and then one seam of the skirt. The two seams of the pocket will join to form the rest of the skirt. So you'll do the same thing. You will just sew a new seam on each pocket seam so that it joins up um, symmetrically with the skirt. All right, so let's say you need your skirt to be shorter. A few different ways you can do that. You can cut off the top of the skirt and uh, reinsert the waistband or add a new waistband. So here's a little picture of how you do that. You measure out what you need. Always keep in mind your allowance that you need. So what I typically suggest is about three inches so that you have enough fabric to fold over the waistband and give you a, an allowance after um, the stitch that you use to form the pocket. I'm using my hands a lot here. Um, once you measure, you will cut that fabric off, dispose of it. <laughs> if you want to reuse the waistband, of course, you're going to have to remove that waistband. Um, or you can just add a new waistband depending on you know, the quality of the waistband that you had in your skirt. Um, and then once you make that cut, you'll just sew the waistband in. It's pretty easy. Um, you can also choose to do this from the bottom. So you will measure the area that you want. Again, keep in mind the allowance that you need for your hem. So typically I suggest an inch. Um, you'll cut that off and then form a new hem. Um, and then your extra fabric, you can just get rid of it, dispose of it, use it for tobacco ties, whatever you want. Hey, I'm just popping in real quick to say I forgot to talk about how to make your skirt longer. Um, so it's a, typically I suggest to just add fabric to the top or the bottom or even in the middle. Um, it might be easier to get away with it if you do it at the bottom because then you could probably, you know, do something a little cuted up, you know, um, so you could cut like the fabric out much, much wider than your hem and then gather it so that it forms like a nice little ruffle. Um, but anything that you do for elongating your skirt, whether you add fabric to the top or in the middle or the bottom, um, my, suggestion, my suggestion is to always make it look intentional and it'll add to the look of the skirt, you know, using a different pattern or um, a different color or adding applique on that specific part of the skirt. Or like I said, on the bottom, you can ruffle it out. So, okay, so if you need more leg room, you can shorten the skirt. So again, like I mentioned when I talked about the the straight style of a skirt is sometimes you'll just need to make it short, like at or below the knees in order to give your feet some or your legs some room to move so that you can walk. Um, but if you don't want it to be shorter, you can add slits on the sides. If you know, if you have um, a two side seam. If you have, <laughs> so if you have a front and a back and there's two side seams, you can add um, or leave slits on the seams on either side or just one side. If you have just the one seam, then you can leave a slit. So sometimes people will have their one seam on the side or they'll have it on the back, um, whichever is good for you. You can also insert fabric on the side. So when I... Again, when I talked about the mismatched ribbons, you can add like a rectangle or a triangle on the sides to create a gap in between them. You can also just um, 
that gap can be useful for creating a wider hem so that you give your legs more room. You need a wider waist. So if you left your if you cut out your fabric nice and wide, you can probably just take the waistband out and cut a wider waistband, um, and that'll give you a wider waist. But if your fabric isn't wide enough for that, then you can insert fabric on the sides. I've actually done this before with um, my old, old regalia. So I had an auntie made my regalia, my fancy dance regalia, when I was about 11 years old. And then when I was a teenager, I was obviously bigger than I was when I was 11. So I took a rectangle and added that so that it made the, the circumference of the skirt wider. Um, and you can make it look intentional. So um, using applique on that piece of extra fabric or uh, you can do a different ribbon design there. So like on my daughter's they had the ribbon sideways, like horizontal, like most people do. Um, but in the extra fabric and the side seams, I made the ribbon vertical. Um, you can also use like a, a fabric with a different pattern on it or a completely different color of fabric like I did on my fancy dance skirt. Um, whatever you can do. Okay. And now I'm going to get real with you. If none of these work out for you or you're way too nervous to take any of this on, um, you have a skirt that you really, really love, gift it to somebody else or sell it. Um, or you can make something out of it. You know, you know that um, you won't ever be able to wear it as a skirt. You don't want to gift it away. You don't want to sell it. You want to, to keep it. Maybe it, it was a sentimental piece to you. You know, maybe your grandma made it and um, you really want to keep it. You can make something else out of it too. You can make a pillow. You can make a shawl. You can make an apron. Um, I'm not necessarily talking about those kitchen aprons, but that could be cute. But I was talking about like an apron, like let's say a grass dance apron. <laughs> you want to give it to a grass dance in your family. Whatever you come up with that you can make um, something out of the old fabric that still allows you to keep that sentimental piece and be able to utilize it instead of having a skirt, you know, sitting in the closet um, and you'll never be able to wear it again. You know, unless it's sitting in the closet because you want to give it to your, your kid and your kid is only two, so... All right, so that was my ribbon skirt tips and tricks. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any other questions that I didn't answer, you can leave me a comment. Um, probably even get at me on the Twitterverse. That might be the easiest way to get a hold of me because I... I'm going to be honest here. I kind of suck at checking my YouTube comments. <laughs> and that's just because I don't have notifications on for anything. And I'm on Twitter most. So um, get at me if you have any more questions. If you want me to do any other kind of videos talking about other sewing things. So like um, I can talk about machines or... I don't know, whatever you got for me, just let me know if you want me to do it. Can't guarantee that it'll be done or it'll be done quick because um, I'm a student, I work, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a daughter, I'm a community member, <laughs> you know, I'm a busy lady. So if I can get to it, you know, I'll definitely, I'll definitely try. Just let me know. Okay. So yeah, I hope that was helpful or entertaining or whatever you want it to be. And I will see you on the next one. Bye, my peak wabman. Happy sewing.